there's a lot of hype on the internet about what's happening here in our market. So what I wanted to do in this video is give you the raw data so that you can decide for yourself what you think all of this means. Now, I'll give my interpretation at the end. I'll, I'll, I'll kind of give my thoughts on what I think this means moving forward in the short term and then also in the long term. So let's just uh, jump right into it. Uh, so first of all, the median is down uh, again. So we're at $565,000 here in Ada County, which is a 4.2% drop from July of 2022. Now we peaked back in May. So we were at about 602,000, 602,250. And that's about a uh, 6.18 decrease from the peak. Now, homes are selling for uh, less than list price on average. We're at about 94% of list price on average. Last year, that number was at 99.8%. Uh, now buyers are, are you know, trying to get deals. And I think that's kind of the key word here. Buyers are getting deals and they're wanting deals. Uh, sellers are really happy to see buyers come through their homes and uh, to make them an offer. The days on market is also on the rise. Uh, we're at about 29 days right now. So to put that into context, uh, last month, July, we were at about 21 days. Uh, June, 15 days, May, 14 days. And if you go back to last August, that number was at uh, 14. So we're at, we're right here at about 29 days. That's about where we were last or, or two years ago in, in June of 2020. And then if you go back even farther, I didn't put this on my chart, but historically in Ada County, we've been, we've been around 30, between 30 to 50 days, average days on market. Uh, the month's supply of inventory is also uh, up to 2.8 months. Now, notice where that number is compared to uh, where it was in July. It actually didn't budge. For the past two months, we've been sitting at about 2.8 months of supply of inventory. And look at where that number, how that number has climbed up since March. Okay, March of this year, we were at about 0.7, half of a month, basically. So 0.7 up to 2.8. A year ago, that number was 0.6 months supply of inventory. Since last August, we're at about four and we have about four and a half times more inventory than we did a year ago. Now look at where that number sits historically. In January of 2016, we were at about about that, about that number. And going back all the way to 2005, we were above that. Now, a balanced market is, is anywhere between four to six months worth of supply. So we haven't reached a balanced market yet. Now, notice the spike in inventory here. Okay, so we've seen inventory go, go up about 4x since last year. Um, but one, one note of caution here is that increase in inventory has actually coincided with a decrease in sales volume. And that's important to remember. Because if we're talking about uh, getting the inventory back up to more normal levels, let's say we want to get back to a more balanced market, four to six months of inventory. If the, the number of sales goes back to where it was prior to a few months ago, then we're going we're gonna to see more of those listed houses sold and the inventory is going to go back down and that could lead to an increase in prices again. So I made this chart here that helps to illustrate that. Um, in August, so the, just this past month, we sold 732 homes here in Ada County. Now, look at where that number sits compared to uh, years in the past. We haven't sold this few number of homes since, well, since August of 2012. Around 1,100 homes is about average for uh, the, uh, the sales here in uh, Ada County. So that's about, if you take 1,100 as kind of your baseline, we're at about 36% less sales last month than we typically are. So again, if sales go back up, I think that's going to eat away at some of the gains in inventory that we've seen over the past several months. Now on this slide, I also have the number of listings illustrated here. Okay, we had 2,374 listings uh, last uh, just this past month. Look at where that number sits compared to other numbers uh, historically. So I think we're back to uh, uh, more or less the uh, the levels where we were in 
in 2014, 2015, and 2016. Uh, ne next slide I wanted to talk about is uh, subscribing. Uh, if you're not a subscriber yet, hit the subscribe button and the like button. It actually helps this video to go out to more people. So thanks for doing that. I also made this slide here, which illustrates the year-over-year uh, -year equity gains. Uh, look at where, uh, where we are right now. So last month, if you compare the median of August 2022 with the median of August 2021, it's about a six and a half percent gain in equity. Look at where it was in August 2021. The median went up 30% from August 2020 to August 2021, 32% actually. And then 12% August 2020, 6% in 2019. So yes, the market has uh, slowed, the median has gone down, but year over year, we're still at about six and a half percent gain in equity, which is even more than the sort of the normal. Economists like to see anywhere between three to 5% gains in equity year over year. That's simply because people's jobs just can't keep up with a 30% a gain in equity. Um, another way to illustrate this is uh, to go back to 2017 and see where uh, the equity was uh, in 2017 or see where the median was. Median pricing in a county back then was uh, 278000 Today, it's 565000 So that's a 103% gain in equity. The median went up 103% in, uh, what is that, in five years. Another number I think we should be paying attention to is the rent prices. And I haven't heard anybody talking about this either. On average in Boise for a three-bedroom house, you're, you're going to pay about $2,100 in rent. That's about what, what rent prices were last year, August of 2021. But look at where that how that number jumped from August 2020 to August 2021. Now, why does this even matter? Um, it matters because people have to live somewhere. So if they're not, if you're not buying a home, uh, you're gonna have to rent a home. And rent prices are a factor uh, that 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 influence the pool of buyers. So I think the high rent prices will affect the pool of buyers moving forward. And I think we will continue to see more buyers entering into the uh, market as rent prices continue to increase. Now, what does all of this mean? Uh, first of all, the uh, we, we've experienced a, a price correction of about 6.2% so far. Now, that's good for our market. One thing that we've been saying for the past several years is we need prices to slow down. We need prices to come down. They've started to do that. Uh, but they're not down to where we would like them to be. A 30% uh, year over year increase is not sustainable. People's wages just don't increase at that rate, obviously. Um, so, and I, and how, what does that actually look like practically? So, on a $400,000 home, let's say you could have listed your home four months ago at $400,000. Uh, today, you'd listed at $375,000. So, prices have come down, but not so significantly that, is really, that it's really moved the needle for too many people. One thing I would caution, though, is don't just look at price drops as a gauge for how the market is doing. I've had several people tell me, either on my YouTube videos or in person, oh, I've seen prices drop you know, $100,000. Well, I have two, but at what price point? If a price drops from a million down to 900,000, that's a 10% decrease in price. And the other thing to note is that perhaps the agent is just incompetent too. So don't just look at price drops as a gauge for how the market is doing. I mean, it certainly is an indication, but don't just look at that. And in general, buyers are feeling like they are getting a second chance. Prices have come down some, and uh, generally speaking, they're feeling like they have a bit a bit stronger hand now, certainly have a, a bit stronger hand now than they did uh, several months ago or, or certainly a year ago. Uh, as far as inventory, levels are up to where they were in 2015, 2016. Again, let me just caution you that the month's supply of inventory spike has been synonymous with a drop in sales. So uh, what does that actually look like? August of 2022, our sales were down 21% as compared to August of 2021. Or if you compare 2022 with 2020, we were down 34% or 30% as compared to 2019. So if we do get a return back to normal sales, that could erase some of the increase in inventory that we've seen 
And then that would possibly then lead back to a, a, a rapid increase in home prices like we've been seeing. Year over year equity is still at six and a half percent, which is great. Again, three to five percent is kind of more normal. The main losers in Ada County are short term buyers and sellers. So if you bought your home four years ago and sold just this past August, you made money on it. If you bought your home in May and then sold in August, then yeah, you probably lost some money on it. But honestly, how many people does that actually affect? Not very many people buy a house in May and then sell it in August. So really, there hasn't been any losers in the Boise housing market. Um, we'll see kind of what happens going forward. And that's actually the next slide. What is the future outlook? Here's my thoughts. I think interest rates will go down when inflation subsides. Now, we're still pretty high. Okay, I think the last number was what? 8.3% inflation. When will inflation go down? Your guess is as good as mine. Uh, but according to some economists, here's their predictions. They're predicting that over the coming quarters, inflation will come down and that's going to drop the interest rate as well. Uh, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, uh, Mortgage Bankers Association, National Association of Realtors, if you take all of their predictions, average them out, they're saying that by the end of the fourth quarter of 2022, we'll, we, we could be at about a 5.4% interest rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage. Um, and then look at their predictions, averaging everybody's predictions out over the the coming year, that's slowly tapering down 5.3%, 5.2%, 4.8%. Now, again, their guess is just as good as mine or yours. We don't actually know what's going to happen, but economists are predicting that inflation will come, will come down and that, that the, interest, uh, the interest rates will then come down with it. And as the interest rates come down, I think the volume of sales is going to go back up. Now, as far as the short term is concerned, what does that mean for fall of 2022, September, October, November? I think we will see a decrease in prices, but an increase in sales. So fall is, is typically a busier time of year. So I think just naturally people buy homes in the fall. So we'll see more sales and we'll see, but, but I think we will continue to see a decrease in price throughout the year. Maybe another 3%, uh, maybe five, I don't know. Um, I don't foresee 40%. I don't foresee 30% at all. I, again, sales probably will pick up. And, and I've actually seen that myself. I've talked to a number of agents who have said the same thing themselves as well. We have seen increased buyer activity recently. Uh, but investors are still pumping the brakes. Buyers may continue to pump the brakes as well and watch if they're given that luxury. If they don't, if, if you don't actually have to move this fall, you probably won't. What about in the long term, though? We still have a strong interest in the Boise housing market. I think in the coming years, we're going to see a reversion back to a three to five percent year over year growth in house prices, which is normal for the housing market across the United States. And then finally, rent prices will produce more buyers. As rent prices go up, buyers uh, will say, well, I might as well just purchase my own home. So those are the numbers. Let me know what you think. Am I misinterpreting the data? Let me know down in the comments below. Do so cordially though, please. If you haven't hit the, the like button, do so now and I'll see you in the next one.